mammography is one of the best screening tools to find breast cancer. Breast cancer may not be preventable, but you can survive it through early detection. If you're a mother or grandmother, sister or best friend, aunt or cousin, we encourage you to know your risk, make healthy lifestyle choices, and to know what's normal for your body. Get screened, get your mammogram annually. <laughs> we we did. did! Loretta Butler Turner to challenge Hubert Minnis for leadership of the FNM. Taxi drivers fight tour operators on Bay Street. Some southern New Providence residents upset over the state of their area. And Sir Lyndon Penling honored on this National Heroes Day. We've got those stories and more coming up tonight. I'm Dana Smith and NB12 starts now. Thanks for joining us on this National Heroes Day. Amid speculation over a rift between Free National Movement leader Dr. Hubert Minnis and his deputy, Loretta Butler-Turner announced today she will challenge Minnis for the top post at the party's convention next month. Butler-Turner says she is confident she can provide the kind of leadership needed to more effectively challenge the PLP government and return the FNM to office. Bonnie Toot reports. It's official, Loretta Butler-Turner is running for Free National Movement leader. After extensive consultation and personal reflection, the Long Island MP announced her intention to seek the leadership of her party during a news conference at her home this afternoon. She says it comes down to one question, who is the best person for the job? I am very grateful to the service that our present leader of the FNM, Dr. Hubert Minnis, has given as an MP, a minister and leader of our opposition. Still, given the great challenge of mounting a more effective opposition, of holding this government accountable, and of returning the FNM to office, the question is this. Who is the best available person at this time to lead the opposition in Parliament and in the country and to defeat the PLP at the next general election. Surrounded by her husband, son, siblings, and FNM members, Butler Turner said she believes she is the most capable person at this time to unite, reignite, and lead the opposition to victory. She says she hopes to offer a new style of leadership and has the support of many FNM members. I am running for leader because I do believe that the FNM needs the quality of leadership that will attract more independent voters and young people, as well as a growing number of PLPs who are disturbed by the direction of our country today. I believe that I will offer to my party and to our country a big heart, a tough and strong mind, and a spirit of compassion. The Long Island MP reportedly sent a letter to party leader Dr. Hubert Minnis and members to formally notify them of her leadership bid. She noted in that letter, our shared task is to rescue our country from the grip of misrule by a government which has lost touch with the Bahamian people. Prime Minister Perry Christie has given long years of service to the country and I thank him for that. But as Prime Minister, he has failed dismally to deliver on his promise to the Bahamian people, and he has failed to lead. This government is out of control and must be held more accountable by the opposition and by a firm leader of the opposition who will keep both eyes on them inside and outside of Parliament. Butler Turner, who served as the Minister of State for Social Services under the last Ingram administration, also promised to be tough on crime and tackle the high rate of unemployment if successful. If I am fortunate to serve as leader of the opposition and as prime minister, one of my major priorities will be to confront the scourge of violent crime, its root causes, and how we administer the criminal justice system. 
Butler Turner, who is the granddaughter of the first Bahamian Governor General Sir Milo Butler, says she came from a PLP family, but insisted there is a distinct difference between the FNM and PLP. The FNM must be clear about those differences and consistent in our position and our convictions. We in the FNM have a proud record of government, a record of reform and modernization in three non-consecutive administrations led by the Right Honorable Hubert Ingram. The FNM will hold its convention on November 21st. Butler Turner is the first challenger to emerge in the FNM leadership race. Whether her leadership bid is successful or not, Butler Turner pledged to help unify and strengthen her party. Reporting for NB12, I'm Vonnie Tude. A downtown protest by taxi drivers reportedly escalated into a brawl. One local taxi driver who did not want to be named told NB12 the drivers were protesting because tour bus drivers have allegedly been taking customers from them. The protest took place this morning near the Woods Rogers Wharf. However, the taxi driver said things got heated when some tour bus drivers and taxi drivers exchanged words. He said an object was reportedly thrown by one driver at another. As seen on this cell phone video, the protest escalated to the point where one man was seen brandishing some sort of lengthy blunt object. The taxi driver said the incident was eventually broken up by police. Well, Health Minister Dr. Perry Gomez says that controversial Public Hospitals Authority audit, which points to $10 million in unaccounted drugs at the Princess Margaret Hospital, is under review and he'll make further comment on it when the review is finished. Uh, that's under review and uh, I'll make further comments with that when we've completed the review. It's also being investigated through the, the board. Uh, the board met on the report last Tuesday. And so, uh, as you can see, it's just being reviewed. As was reported by the Nassau Guardian, the audit revealed that at the end of 2013, there was a $10 million difference in pharmaceutical inventory between the physical count and what was reflected in PMH's system for that calendar year. The forensic audit also pointed to a series of other alleged breaches and possible corruption. Any major piece of work goes before the cabinet and so the report has not gone to even cabinet yet because we only just are reviewing it okay and we'll be happy to do so when we have it completed as for if and when the audit will be tabled in the house of assembly as has been demanded by members of the opposition and the dna gomez said it has to go to cabinet first the ministry of health has a plan to address the ebola issue it's been developed over a period of months and um, a lot of work has gone into it. And it's a thick document, about 40 pages. And so anybody who is out there espousing that the ministry has not done anything about it is not telling the truth. Reporters attempted to ask the prime minister about this issue and other topics today. He promised to address such matters at a later time tomorrow. Frustrated residents of one southern New Province community say they are tired of spending their hard-earned money to live in what they're now calling a dump. Simone Davis spoke to some of them and highlighted their concerns in this report. Disgruntled residents of the Southern Dream subdivision say they are fed up with the conditions of their community. They are calling on the responsible developers to properly pave the roads and clean up the area. Dead dogs, abandoned cars, unpaved roads, and what's being called a complete lack of police presence. These are the conditions that residents of Southern Dreams, tucked away in South Beach, members of this community say they feel forgotten by their MP, Cleola Hamilton, and by the developer of this public-private subdivision. Area resident Clive Lynch says it's been months and no one seems to be paying attention to their concerns. Basically, uh, a lot of things should be done, and it hasn't been done, and it really concerns us, mainly with the lighting and the paving of the road, right? The road should be paved. Uh, one side is owned by the government. Another side is owned by, uh, by private. And the, the developers and the MP, the government, they haven't come through with their promises, and it's a real concern to us. If you look behind us, uh, you can see the sign there that says Southern Dream Subdivision. You see how beautiful that sign is, the road paved, everything look immaculate. Coming in the back here, it's totally different. 
Residents also have an issue with most areas in the community being used as an illegal dumping site and a popular place for thieves to hide away what they believe are stolen items, including cars. Right now, this is a, a regular dumping spot. It looked like for everybody. Um, we have to daily be checking it every day. Um, between the nights, I know, I know between the hours of between 10 and 12, um, we usually have cars coming by, dumping between bottles, garbage, even dead animals. That's what you're smelling right now. It's a dead dog somewhere, I think, where we pass. You know, sorry for the scent, but it, 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 it's a real hazard for the, for the neighbors around now. No street lights have also been contributed to increasing crime in the area, said Lynch, claiming that robbers target the area. He said his dreams of home ownership is turning into a nightmare. In the back here is total darkness, and crooks using it to their advantage. Like I said, my car has been stolen. We have numerous break-ins, and up till now, the police haven't really responded in the back here. Okay? Now, the subdivision, uh, one section of this is called Southern Dream, but then this, to me, this is a dream that really turned into a nightmare. As we indicated, the area Southern Dream sits on is being developed by private backers and the government with the boundaries being somewhat unclear. However, we talked to one of the developers who asked not to be identified. He said he is aware of the conditions and what needs to be done from the private development perspective and is committed to ensuring that the roads are paved within a month. We were unable to get in touch with Hamilton or the officers responsible at the South Beach station up till news time. The Environment and Housing Minister was out of the country as we covered this story this weekend, but we'll let you know if and when we get a response to our questions about this matter. Reporting for NB12, I'm Simone Davis.